All right, I'm going to do a video explaining about leak detection and how you can check for leaks. You need a leak detector like this one right here. It's a um, Baccarat, and I've had it for several years, and it works great. Um, on the side here is a uh, little jug of uh, R11 that you use to calibrate it with, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. So the first thing you want to do is uh, take the probe, and of course you see a little ball in there, it's sucking air through there and it's pulling that ball up. And what that does is it actually uh, brings refrigerant into the system and it'll detect it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it on there, and we're going to calibrate it. So as you can see, it's picking up the refrigerant in that little container. Now over here, I went ahead and replaced my compressor, and I didn't replace it, I had to take it out because I redid work on the engine. So I went ahead and uh, had to disconnect those two um, lines right there. The one on the left, which is that one right there, is the liquid line, and that's the suction line. It's a bigger line. So I'm going to check both of those to make sure there's no leaks on it. Now, I evacuated the system, and I went ahead and put some refrigerant in. I think I've got about 50 pounds. So uh, if there's any sign of leak, uh, it'll, it'll show. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start on the bottom here and we're going to check around the fitting to make sure we don't get any signal, no sign of leak and we're going to do the same at the top. Now we can also do a soap test, spray some soap on there too but uh, this works a lot better because this will pick up a half ounce leak in a year. That's how sensitive this uh, leak detector is. So there's the liquid line I'm checking it. I'm not getting anything. So that tells me that the system is tight at the connectors. Now those connections right there I've done a couple weeks ago. I didn't take them apart. I didn't do anything with them. There's no need to check them. They're not leaking. So um, we're not going to worry about it. Um, so that's pretty much it on that. So I'm going to get ready to start charging it. I'm going to hook my gauges up and then we'll go through that process. The first thing we're going to do is put a vacuum on the system, and there's my little vacuum pump, Robin Air, things like 1.2 CFM, not a big one, but it does the job for small systems, and there's my gauges, and it's slowly pulling it down. The one you want to be concerned about is the low pressure side, we're getting close to 29 inches of vacuum, and that's what we want. So I've already evacuated the system once and I went ahead and put a little refrigerant in it just to check it. So I know it's not going to leak, so it's tight. So um, everything's looking good so far. Alright, as you can see, <clears throat> we're at about 29 inches of vacuum, so uh, we're ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and shut the vacuum pump off and um, Work the can of refrigerant up and that'll be the next step, next process. This is the adapter I'm going to be using to charge the system. Um, it's got the bottom female adapter that screws on the can. It's got the little pin that uh, punctures the can. And of course then you've got your Schrader end where you hook your hose to. Um, I went ahead and picked this up. I don't remember where I got it but I've had it for a while so uh, it works fine for what I need. So we're going to get ready to uh, charge the system. Alright, <clears throat> I've got my can hooked up to my gauges and I've got both those valves closed. Um, and we still have our vacuum on the system. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to purge the line going from the can over to the gauges. Um, and the reason for doing that is so you don't get any air in the system. Alright, we got the can connected to the hose and I'm going to go ahead and I punctured it so it's got refrigerant in it and I open it back up again what I'm going to do next is uh, purge the line at the gauge so I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera over to that so you can see what's going on there all right what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up just a little bit air bleeding I'm just letting some of the air out just in case there's any air in there. I'm just letting it out and letting the refrigerant take over. So 
that's ready to go. <coughs> now the next step is to go ahead and charge it and then we'll go ahead and go from there. All right, the way we're going to do this is we're going to go ahead and turn the can over. I'm going to go ahead and open it up, make sure it's open, and then we're going to go ahead and open the lines on the high side. Go ahead and fill it up as much as we can. Now the suction side, you can see the gauge starting to come up just a little bit. That expansion valve is closed, so it might take a little while for it to, uh, to start coming up. But uh, we've got about 100 pounds of refrigerant in there right now. So um, we'll give it a couple more a minute or two and let it go. And then we're going to go ahead and start the engine up. And we'll continue charging it. Um, we're still getting a negative pressure on the suction side. We're about almost 100. So I'm going to go ahead and add some refrigerant to it. And we'll start pulling it in on the suction side. Gonna dump the can in on the liquid like, let it go. And as you can see, our uh, pressure's on the high side will start coming up. <coughs> I'll put a can in and we'll check the uh, air temperature and we'll also check the side pump. So as you can see, it's taking it in. drop which means the cans starting to empty out. <laughs> of course our pressure on our high side came up a little bit. We're a little over 100. So we're still dumping the refrigerant. Right now we're a little over 20 psi. So I'm going to shut the camera off and well, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take a supply air temperature reading and we'll look at the side valve. Sight glass is clear, so we're uh, we got a little bit of just a little bit of bubbling in there, nothing to be concerned about. So we're uh, we're fully charged right now, and so we're just gonna leave it like it is. Okay, we're in the cab. I've got the air full blast, and right now we are reading we're about 48. I'm sorry. So that's at um, idle about 12. 1200 RPMs idle. I mean, here we are sitting there, and so there's no reason why we should you shouldn't be able to get your supply air temperature down to at least 40 degrees. So, and this is at idle. So when I get it out on the road, and of course we're at almost 90 degrees in the garage here, so it's pretty warm in here. So as you can see, it's possible to do it. And of course, I redid the work on the duct. So that may be a helping factor too, but I've got uh, air coming out from underneath down there and I've got air coming out from here. So um, as you can see, you know, we're just sitting here and we're staying around 40, 48 degrees. Can't complain about that. And that's almost 90 degrees outside. And we're at a, uh, 1100 RPMs or a little under. So when we get on the road and start revving it up and getting around 3000 RPMs, that temperature is probably gonna come down more if it's cooler outside but if we're in the hot sun you're probably looking at 50 degree supply air temperature which is what I had before I had to take the compressor out so everything looks good